Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So look at those beautiful blooms of lily in the valley. Aren't they pretty sweet? They're so sweet. They come out this time of year and they're all over my yard. I figured why not do a tutorial on this wonderful little cute, sweet, magical flower. It's so pretty. So let's get started with this. So yes, I'm going to show you how to paint this and draw this step by step. Super easy. This is for any skill level. Trust me, if you're a beginner, you can do this. If you're an expert, you can do this. You just take your time. If you're more beginner and expert, you just go for it. You just whip through this whole painting. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Also check out my Patreon. I have ad free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials, and a live stream in the top tier, as well as a Facebook group with weekly challenges and monthly giveaways. You can check out the link for it in the description down below. And it's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. So without further ado, let's get painting Lily of the Valley. Okay, so for this quick tutorial, um, go over my supplies. I'm using a paper, it's Arsh, 100% cotton cold press. I just had the pad here, the screen pad. I'll be using my Princeton 12 Neptune series brush. Um, watercolor as we talk about water jars. So if you never drew um, Lily of the Valley, I'm just, I already have mine traced out here. I'll just show you how to draw real quick. So they're just like little bells. So I would just do like a curved line like this, coming, coming down. And then you're drawing like a little bell. So it's just kind of, see like a little curve swooping out and connecting it. And then you draw another one. So a little bell here. And you draw another one kind of in front of it and another one and I'm drawing them fairly large size but you can draw them smaller because they're really kind of tiny, tiny little flowers and then the leaves are just simple like leaves that go like this behind them and like that now for this exercise we're gonna be painting the negative space around the bells and then going in and adding the stems and all that kind of fun stuff and I've already drawn out mine here. I'm gonna draw it fairly smaller than the piece of paper. This is a nine by twelve, nine by twelve, and it's a little smaller than that. I've already just sketched it in. If you have difficulty painting around the white bells, then by all means, and uh, use some masking fluid, and just use that for the white bells. But it doesn't have to be perfect, so don't worry about it. So mix up some greens. I've got. Uh, I mix up my green with, I used compression blue and keep adding yellow. And I've got peacock blue here. And I'm going to mix some yellow with that. It's like a bright green. Went a bunch of greens and blues. A little deeper green. I use Prussian blue with some cabin yellow deep. Or you can use whatever deep green you want to use, but that's how I mix mine. And I keep playing around with the consistency and I add a little burnt umber to my Prussian blue yellow combination. Just to dull it down here. What we're going to just start to do is paint around these little lovely um, Lily Valley. And also, I have white gouache um, on standby. So, we're going to splatter some of that to kind of dissipate some of the color, which is kind of cool. If you don't have white gouache, you have maybe a white acrylic ink. And if you don't have that, well, then you can try some white watercolor. I don't know. But white gouache is really great. So then we have this turquoise color. So we're going to start to paint around and you want to mix up a fair amount. So I'm going to mix up some more green over here. Get more blue, grab the blue, a lot of my color. I'm going to have blues close by and greens close by. Even ultimate blue, we can like loosen up a little bit. It's going to be bleeding different colors. So I'm just going to get this loose. Okay. So I've got my 12 brush. I'm going to start to wet on dry. So this is dry. I'm kind of going to go around pretty quickly, like the white area and even the stem with some of the green. Just like this. If you messed up and didn't go around the stem, don't worry about it because the stem could be even darker. Just going around these little cute little bells with this color. And as I'm doing that, I can bleed in some darker tones. Right? So I'm just going around this color. Yeah, pretty, fairly fast. You kind of kind of move a little fast. And you can kind of go around that. And if you mess up, don't worry because it's supposed to be really loose anyway. 
So here I'm going to grab water and kind of mush this in here a little bit. And then we have kind of the beginnings of this like leaf. I'm just going to fill this in real quick. But even still, I'm going to go back around these little stem area, what's in this green, and now I'm going to grab water and kind of mush it out. Grabbing water still in my brush, see? Not too much. I got, that was a little too much, but kind of mushing this out. I'm going to grab some peacock blue, kind of bleed some of this color in. Again, I want to keep the shape of that bell. So if I have to go up in here. And now I'm going to kind of lift my paper a little bit so I can move it around. And I'm bringing some peacock blue up in here. See, I'm kind of just mushing the color. Out this way, down this way. I've lost some of my bell a little bit, but not that much. I can go in some dark tones under, right under this bell so you can kind of see it. Just bleeding. That's why you mix all the colors first, right? See, you're doing a negative space with the bell. If you messed up and you want to remove some of the paint, I would grab like a different brush, maybe like more shorter brush. This is a, a 10 and you can kind of lift some of the paint. You just lift and tap it back on your paper towel. Really, that's how you paint around it. So, kind of grab some darker color again, like I showed you. You can even just grab some Prussian blue and bleed that in as well. Bleeding around here. You can grab some gray. I've got paints gray. Put a little bit of that. Ooh, intensity kind of mushing the color around this way. Now I'm going to put some like strokes going like this, just like it's some cool energy happening. Put some color down here. You can just play around with the colors. It doesn't have to be the same colors as mine. You can make them more bluish. So I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing some peacock blue and I'm removing that and I'm kind of mushing that around a little bit. Getting that wet and damp. We're going to fix this leaf back here in a minute, but we're just going to put some color out here. You can even put turquoise out here. It's not necessary to worry about that right now. So we have this like kind of a vignette style. I do want to make the edges kind of more soft. So I'm adding some water and kind of softening them out like this. You see, it's kind of just kind of fading into the distance. Sweet, right? Clean off your brush, grab some more water, and just kind of blend that. So it's just kind of fading, like really pretty and soft. So delicate. <laughs> I'm going to go back and make some more dark green. Oops. Get right in there with that negative space with color. But it can be really light like that. Mine's pretty light. Um, it doesn't have to be super dark. You can see the white. You can see all that. But some of it would be kind of cool because we're going to have this dark green leaf in the back here and it's going to be much darker. It's still damp and you can kind of just bleed that leaf like going like this. And if you want the other one, that's why I'm putting another one in here. Like, I, the, like the drawing that I showed you. See how it's kind of bleeding? We'll just play with this a little bit. Yeah, good like that. And you can put some other like leaves kind of happening here. We get the main one there though, and the little one here. So while this is all kind of doing this little bleeding kind of situation, I'm gonna take, we have this nice blue hip. Loosen up the gouache, and I'm gonna splatter it, and it's gonna create a really cool effect. Just tap it over another brush or pencil or something. The bigger the splatter is by getting it looser so I'm trying to get this a little bit looser and putting more water. Like magical little splats. And it's going to go shh and create this really kind of cool effect. There we go. It's a nice big ones. It's really pretty. It won't stay like the dots. It will kind of like dissipate. So similar kind of effect is with the, the salt. You can try doing that with salt. So now this little leaf kind of scenario is just kind of like blending in the background. 
You can kind of manipulate it if you want it hard edge more. You can kind of just swoop up and grab some of that color. But you can see already that the gouache is doing that magic thing that I love. Right, and we want to just fix the edge a little bit by grabbing some thicker paint. So here I have minimal water, getting these leaves a little bit darker. So you can see the tip. It's still damp, so it's still kind of bleeding a little bit. But you faintly see the leaf. And kind of come down here, that leaf behind it. It's cool, right? It's just like this shh, atmospheric <laughs> kind of Boca related. Just kind of mixing. Here we go. All right. Now we've lost a little bit of the stem here, but it's no big deal because we're going to fill it in with lighter color. You can kind of lift it. If you can try and lift it. So how you lift it is you clean off your brush with a little bit of water on there and you're kind of lifting, slowly lifting the paint off the paper. So even here. And we're going to make that like a light pale green. Now if we put it in now, it's just going to be lifting this paint. It's going to take a little bit. Take a little bit of time. So while that is drying, you can work on your little bells. All you need to add in is a little, a little gray or a little blue. So I'm taking some Payne's Gray, watering it down, even some Peacock Blue. And you just put in a couple little shadows on the bell. So I've got the gouache kind of in here. Maybe on the side a little bit and then indentation right here on the top. Really just a little line like this. Grabbing a little more gray. See all the little indentations, just a little bit of gray. You can add a little blue too, it's kind of pretty. Doesn't have to be gray. Just gives it that three-dimensional flower look that we're going for. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You kind of know what it is already. I'm going to go out to the side a little bit. Didn't want to go in too, too close too early because it could bleed into the, into the green background. I'm just going to mush it around in the center here and here. Just like that. So you just do like a little of that and you kind of mush it so it gets a little softer. You can add a little, I'm adding a little peacock blue because it doesn't have to be gray. A little blue is pretty. So you get that. And then another stem here, I'm going to try and remove the paint again. Just remove some of this, see, and lifting. That paint gets painted over, I painted over my stem, but you can just kind of lift it up. A little skinny. And I'll add some like light pale green for the stems. And a little, cute little lily of the valley. You can make it a little darker too if you want to do that instead. You don't really see it as well. It should be a little bit lighter. Just kind of lift up some of this paint here. It helps to have like a paper towel close by. And you can just kind of take your paint, water, lift it, and then tap it to get rid of that a little bit. There. Now we have our stem we can put in here. See? I'll make mine a little bit darker on one side so you can kind of see it. See on the bottom of each little line. Get that dark, dark green. This part's still damp, so you gotta wait till it kind of dissipates. Remember my, my leaf out here? It's kind of doing this fuzzy thing, so you can get more serious and kind of make it more of a sharp edge a little bit. Just kind of go like that, right over that area. Come leave that little splotch. 
my little leaves. Just gonna kind of add in a sharper edge. It can be soft though, it doesn't have to be sharp. It's up to you. I'm just kind of fixing this. Getting a little bit darker still here. You can put some grass kind of down here. Zooming back out. I know the leaves got kind of funky, so I might kind of want to mush them a little bit. I don't like the way they were looking. Stand up and always look and see if you like it. I think this looks a little better. Do my little mushy thing. Looks much prettier now. So I'm grabbing some water and just kind of mushing out that leaf. And I'll add some like darker tones like this. So it doesn't look like it's strange. <laughs> it was looking a little strange, so I'm just gonna fix it. I'm gonna add a little yellow. And then I kind of mush this one too. So you can kind of see the leaf, but it's not so serious. I think I was trying to make it serious and then it just didn't look as good. So here I'm gonna go back and just kind of fix this a little bit. Yeah, I can go back in and splotch in some more um, gouache if I want to. Or I can show you like another cool thing. You can remove the paint with bokeh, the bokeh like technique. So I'm just gonna put this in for now and I'll show you that in a second. So mixing up some dark greens, going under this. Highlighting that stem. And then here, still kind of damp. Just gonna add a little more color. So it highlights that pretty, 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 pretty lily of the valley flower. Yeah, a lot of my gouache kind of dissipated, right? But it still has that really cool soft look. I'm gonna get some darker color in here because I feel like there's just like a little stripe in here. It's still damp, so I can play around with it a little bit. Could add some leaves, some grass, a little dry brush. That's a nice energy. And this look really soft out here. I'm gonna go ahead and more grass. Yeah, kind of cool. So that bokeh technique, I would use um, not a really good brush, but like a somewhat crappy brush. I have this old crappy brush. So we're kind of removing the paint in a circular motion, tapping it, grab some water. You could use a paper towel, but this was a better technique. See, I'm lifting it. This one's really kind of damp. If you use the paper towel and squinch it up like a little ball, you could do the same thing. So you're removing the paint, and then I would move some more around it. <laughs> that ball is maybe too small. Sound effects and all. It's not quite a circle. That's why you go in with the the paintbrush and remove it with the circle. That's why you don't use a nice brush because it kind of wrecks it. I see how I'm removing it. Very kind of magical looking. Just in a circular motion, tapping back on the paper towel. Just like that. And while it's still damp, I can go back in and I can actually bleed in some more gouache and see what happens. I just love that look. It's gonna do its thing. All right, so basically at the end here, we're just gonna remove the 
paint it's going to have to dry a little bit. We're going to move this so we have a nice stem happening here. See I'm slowly removing it so you can see it. We get kind of blended. Just going back and removing it. But you can see the stem. The one that I drew, that I showed you. It helps to have some color underneath it, a darker tone. Just have a little patience with this technique, removing bokeh, all that good stuff. And you can still see it. Isn't that sweet? And how long did that take us? Not much time, right? Now here it's dry, so we're not going to get that sweet blend of the gouache. So I'm just kind of mushing it so it looks a little translucent. Also another trick, once the color is dry, you can just take loose color like this yellow color and you can change the color. See, I'm going to add some yellow in there. That's glazing. A little bright yellow in there. Just to brighten it up a little bit. And that's it. That's all you do for the Lily of the Valley. It's really kind of simple techniques. Uh, I might go back in and add a little bit brown stem. Just feel like it needs something over here. You could put um, leaves. Play around with it a little bit. Making those little stems kind of peeking through up in here. Just to give it some kind of variety. Little grasses. But that's my little of the valley and it really didn't take much time. It's a lot of fun. You can try doing the bokeh, like even in here, like maybe a little bokeh would happen in here. Removing some of that paint. Let's just take your time doing that. Sometimes the paper towel is faster. Look at that. Down here. It moves it much faster. <laughs> it's the fastest way. This way it takes a lot longer. Has a cool effect though. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this quick Lily of the Valley. Um, tell me what you think. If you have fun doing this, if you don't like doing this, I love seeing them in my yard, but sometimes they're overgrowing it too much. <laughs> but this was sweet and you can paint them even smaller um, or be even bigger, experiment with the whole bleeding the color and you don't even have to use masking fluid like I showed you. You just kind of draw them and paint around it. So thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Please don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We have a lot of fun over here. Take care guys and I'll speak to you soon.